Hey, I'm Pascal from Orange Pixel. Welcome to another video. Let's talk about Regulator City. If you've been with the channel for like last year, you've noticed I've released a game, Gauntlet of Power, just a few weeks ago. That game was a breeze in game development, very easy. I did most of the work um, in my evenings and on my Sundays, so outside my normal working hours as I work on my games full time, day in, day out. Regulator City was my main project. I started on that game back in 2021 after releasing Residual. Um, yeah, we're now in 2024, game is still in development. This is the project that I warn everybody about on this channel. Don't create games that take that long. But let me first rewind to the start, how it began. This mock-up was pretty much the idea. You are leading a team, you are entering buildings, uh, moving through hallways, breaching doors, taking out gangs. And you do this all real time. So your team is pretty much AI controlled and moving around you, trying to take down all these gangs. And as you create, take down the gangs, you move up in ranks and you somehow become your own gang, pretty much ruling or regulating the city. A lot of ideas there, a lot of stuff there. Uh, the whole AI thing was the biggest issue. I had no idea how to really do it. How long could something like that take? Yeah, way too long. I actually did manage to get it up and running. You got three of these squad members moving around you, opening doors, taking out enemies, uh, backing you up, uh, controlling stuff on their own as once they learn certain skills. And it was pretty cool to see it all running and working. And the technology side of things was pretty cool to see it all come together and work out. And I was happy with it. But then I figured out that the whole idea of having your squad or three of these squad members moving around you maybe wasn't the best game design idea. Let's talk a bit about that after the intro. Okay, so technically it's all up and running and I'm pretty happy with what I achieved. But I found myself um, not enjoying this team have moving around me. Um, you can't design these things on paper. You can't design these things up front. You need to actually build it to find out that maybe it's not as good as you thought it would be. Most of the play sessions I had, I was pretty much looking at my team. What are you guys doing? Where are you moving towards? Who are you taking out? Where are you going towards? And that um, management wise, I guess that's a good thing, but I'm also still controlling the main character and I want to take out these guys as well. I don't want to babysit my squad. I want to actually be part and part of the action in the, in the middle of the action. And um, having these squad members moving around you as cool as it looks, um, it doesn't play as cool. It's probably, um, for a Twitch streamer, it would probably be very interesting for his audience to see these guys move around because you have the time to look at everything. But if you're the player, you actually can't focus on your own stuff if there is squad members moving around everywhere doing things. So it's painful to make these decisions in game development, but something had to change. So I killed a couple of squad members. I wanted to see how it played if I had just one team member moving alongside me, which is a lot easier because then it becomes more of a co-op like game, except the other character is played by the computer, by the AI, not by a human being. Although we add local co-op eventually to the game, working on that right now as I'm recording this. Well, not as I'm recording this. So we now have this one squad member moving alongside you and it removes so much chaos and things happening from the game that it becomes more enjoyable to actually go into a building. And just a couple of days ago, I had a cool play session where I moved into a bathroom from a building. It had a certain um, ventilation shaft that brought me to another place where I could turn off the power. We both had um, night vision goggles. So I turned off the power, night vision goggles went on. We went back moving from room to room, cutting wires on security cameras that were now down because there was no power, taking out enemies who couldn't see in the dark. And then the power turned back on and we had cleared a couple of rooms. With this squad member moving alongside me and doing stuff on his own. And it felt so much better now. So um, 
it's painful to take these decisions and on regulator city i've made a lot of these decisions i i had a city map at some point that you could actually see the progress of you moving or through the city which looked cool and i put a lot of time into moving cars uh, pedestrians that actually started shooting each other uh, got run over by cars cars actually stopping at stoplights a lot of stuff a lot of time went into that because it looked pretty cool but over time it just didn't fell right for the game so i removed that and i had various other pretty big features that i spent a lot of time on and i had to remove them because they just weren't working and um i've never had this happen to any of my game project like this bad everything in this project just the core is there it's a top-down shooter but it has all these little things going on and just making sure everything works and everything plays nice together and is fun has been a huge undertaking and i've never expected this i never ran into it with other projects <sighs> honestly is pretty stressing at times um, so this game is taking much longer than it should have for all these reasons um, a lot of the features that got stripped are now coming back slowly into the game but now in a way that fits the current model the current structure of the game for example we had these squad members you would actually um, generate them from a cloning device at the headquarters um, that part is now gone you just have a teammate standing there ready for you to go with default stats um, he has a certain uh, level of skill but you can now increase that skill this was already part of the game they would level up automatically gaining certain skills randomly now you can actually control which skills will be assigned or upgraded um, faster so you now have more control over your one squad member and you also might actually start liking him and not want him to die um, you can actually revive him if he gets shot now, this was already in the game but at a very early stage I removed it at some point because it was just too chaotic if you had three squad members and they would be dying on you at certain areas of the map you might not even be able to see them and who cares you're just gonna get new ones at HQ but now you're upgrading this guy you're teaching him new skills new new things you don't want him to die so you will now actually notice that he's fallen he will be there and you have time to um, fix him, to uh, save him, rescue him, if you have a medikit in your inventory. So that system was in there, got removed, but it's now back in a better way. And this is pretty much how the whole game's development uh, track has been going. I've been adding things, trying them out, see if they work, see if I could make them work. At some point, removing a lot of those things, but then also putting them back in later to hopefully end up with a pretty cool game so the idea right now is that i'm pretty much working on this full-time non-stop um, it needs a bunch of new content and this is what i always was struggling with as well we have all these enemies they have different weapon types some of them now have different skills they can actually uh, perform certain uh, moves because they're mutants they have mutations they have different um, ways to attack you so that's now implemented but I needed more variation, but I just never figured out what kind of variation I could add to this world, what would fit there. So um, I have been adding in the recent weeks uh, rats that are mutating from ooze, so they are attacking you. There were always rats in the game, but they were just moving around, just scenery, just interesting addition. Now some of them will be um, bursting with ooze and actually attacking you. We have furniture that is possessed by these mutant little oozy bits type scully creature thingies that's not the official term it's something i'm going with now but these will actually start attacking you if you try to destroy them or by accident shoot them or have them explode or break so we now have little furniture items like chairs lamps tables they will actually come at you if you start uh, smashing them or shooting them or whatever and then you have to destroy them and then a little ooze thingy creature comes out you kill that one and it's gone but this now adds variation to the level and the different enemies and now i'm trying to come up with more interesting enemies and situations to just add more content this is pretty much now the, the last stride to the finish line i want to have it all done in november uh, that doesn't mean i'm releasing in november i want it all done in november that means a full game all the content there uh, various maps to move through words uh, various enemies items all the features and have it done and ready uh, so that maybe i could just spend a little month here and there 
tinkering with things, um, of course do some beta testing with players, and then also figure out how to actually release it the best way. I might go hunting for a publisher at that point, it's gonna be interesting. I'll have a full game, I don't need development budget, I'll have a full game that maybe just lead localization, maybe some more music, but no big major features. Who knows, a publisher might be interested in that. Uh, we'll see, and uh, we're gonna do marketing after that and release it somewhere in 2025, which is gonna be my the biggest project and also the longest one in development. And I'm never gonna do that again. Um, I might strip it for parts to reuse in much smaller games now that I have figured out so many things in this game that I could reuse in other games. I might start doing that, but uh, for now, this is the biggest game I'm ever gonna release. I just need to finish it. So there is a demo available for Regulate City on Steam right now. Um, I'm recording this on Monday. I'm gonna try to push a new demo before the video goes live. So you can actually check out the current state of the game, like the most up-to-date one. Um, so check that on Steam, description below, you'll find all the Orange Pixel games on Steam. Also check out Gauntlet of Power, the game that actually got released a few weeks ago. Getting a major update this week, um, don't buy it this week, buy it next week. It will be on a first uh, sale as part of a festival, a pixel, pixel festival thingy, whatever. That's starting on Monday, so um, Gaunt of Power, get it next week if you want to get it, because it will be on a 20% discount, part of a new festival. And it will have a new version, actually need to do that as well this week, version 1.2.0. A lot of new fixes, changes, uh, balancing improvements, uh, difficulty settings, all that stuff. I've been very busy. So I'm gonna wrap up this video so I can do all these things and make sure they are ready. Thanks for watching the video. Uh, make sure to like, subscribe, comment below, hop on the Discord, come say hi, come talk about these games or any other game or any TV show, movie, life situation, whatever. I'll see you next week. Bye.